Hey guys, it's going to Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the development of my AR application. I want to show you how I handle the UI with Unity, how I slice the UI, how I use Photoshop to help me do that. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you how I have the UI organized. And this is really important to know because, you know, if you're thinking about releasing or, you know, working on a, on an app that it's built in Unity, there's a couple of things that I've been learning over the years. So I want to show you how I organize the, the UI and also how I can slice all the pieces in the UI so that we can get something similar to this. I'm also using a website called flaticon.com. And I have a premium subscription where I can download all these assets. And some of the assets that I download are the icons themselves, and then I change how they look. And, and that gives me a kickstart because it allows me to, you know, to be able to use them as a service and then also be able to use those assets in my own application. So I show you in the previous videos how some of the UI work, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that one more time so that you can get a an idea of how the application works. So I have two main icons on the, you know, as soon as you hit, you start the game. In this case, it's going to be an app. And as I click on the, or touch the actual mode, this is going to change the way that the application interacts. So in this case, I can, you know, I can actually draw, or if I change the mode to, to this other mode, which is called the actual effect, you can see that the icons on the hierarchy, the actual game objects are gonna be changing as I select the different modes. So if you look at here, the draw mode is going to be the first button. Then I enable the effect the effect mode button. And then, you know, if I keep touching or clicking on it, it's going to change the mode. Now we're in the motion. If I select it again, now we're in text and I have a few other options that get, you know, get activated as soon as, as soon as this icon in this mode gets activated. And you can see that the mode, some modes have different options. Some modes don't have options. And some modes just have, yeah, just this icon, which is going to be the main icon. So if we go to this one, there's really no options. And I'm actually going to be moving some of these options, such as grabbing, because this one is more for grabbing a line. So it shouldn't be its own mode. It should be part of the drawing mode. And that's something that I discovered as I was working on it is, is you know, I need to I need to see how it works. And then when you look at the UI, you look at UX, you start looking at asking yourself a question about, you know, what should satisfy the user, what it's, how is the experience going to, you know, going to affect the usability of the application. And, and that's what I'm realizing is as I'm working on it, I'm, I'm finding ways to improve the usage. And then of course, when we go through beta testing, I'm sure I'm going to be getting a lot more information about what works, what doesn't work, how it should behave. And then, you know, I can grab the feedback, do an iteration and then improve the experience. But so right now that's how this works is I have UI for, you know, some of the modes, I have additional options for the modes. In this case, it's going to be options. And, and if I want to see the options, I can expand it, look at additional options, which is now activated a new menu. And this menu, it's a grab options. It has a some set of icons. You can see that there's a outer area, which is covering the entire area. The reason that I do that is because if I click in here or touch here, I want to dismiss the icon. So I have a pointer click event that is capturing that and then dismissing this menu right here. Then I also have a window, which is the window that you see right now that has the, the two different icons. One is for deleting, the other one is duplicating. I wanted to keep it simple. And for now I have a description on the icon, which in this case is delete and duplicate. But I think, you know, long-term I'm not gonna have this and I think the user should be able to figure it out as they use the application. But like I said, right now, I just, you know, I haven't labeled and it's because I'm in prototyping phases. And, you know, later on when I get more information, I might just remove those texts. But for now, they tell you what they do. So you can see that this button. So what I want to show you is also the organization of this. So if I go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the inspector down here and then we're going to focus on the inspector. So of course this is under a canvas. So everything here is a canvas and this one is using a button. So a rec transform because we're using the canvas, a canvas render. 
the image itself, which is going to be the image for the icon that I that I have selected. So in this case, if I delete it, you see a white background. If I undo, you see the actual icon that is associated with that button. Of course, they're all doing a recast target because I need to capture the actual event, you know, being clicked on that button. And then, you know, they also have a button component. And then the I'm using the onclick events on most of these ones and then assigning that to an actual script. And that script is executing an action, which is in this case, I'm using the grab manager to delete a line. So this one is for deleting lines. So you can see the event that is getting executed, the action that is getting executed, and then you can see everything that is associated with that button. So on the on the same lines, if I go to the duplicate button, same structure, except I'm executing you know the duplicate line, which is a different event. But for the most part, everything is the same. So if I were to click in here, like I was saying, how do you, how do I handle that? So this outer area has a pointer click event trigger, and it also has a raw image. The raw image, all it's doing is I just have a little bit of a fade out. The alpha is changed. And that's why you can see you know, if I increment this. So I want it to not be exactly the same as the background because people can't really see that there is a menu coming out. So I think by having a little bit of an alpha, it gives me the opportunity to let the user know that, yeah, this is a new menu. And then they, and I'm thinking that they're going to figure it out if they, you know, if they touch outside of the bounds of the window, it's going to dismiss the, you know, the actual window. So that's what I'm trying to do with these with the alpha value here and then the event trigger of course is the action that gets executed when somebody touches here or where you click in here which then calls the dismiss grab option so anything related to grab is going to be managed on the on my other game game object which is called the grab manager so i try to keep all the managers here and then the ui is purely ui and all the ui is doing is just sending events to the managers the managers grab the event and then they apply the actions so that's how some of these work. So if I go back to here and I were to select this one, go to options, duplicate, I can duplicate lines. So all of that, all of that works. I can also select the line and then delete. So that's all working. So let's go ahead and hit play. And then that way we can delete it. We can start from scratch. So that's how the modes and the options work. So if I click on the menu, you can see all these different options. So that area is handled in, in a little bit different manner. So you look at the modes and I show you some of the options. So now if I want to handle the menu, the menu is it's in its own panel. So I call it the menu options and everything in the menu is handled through here. So if I were to change, for instance, this menu area. So this is, this one is called the effects panel, which is all handled in this, in this game object. If I click on this one, it's going to be motion and then setting is going to be this one. So you can see how as I change them, these ones are becoming enabled. The, is disabling the previous one, activating the next one, and then so on. So I can go here and then do that. So I'm also changing the mode because I found that by changing the mode, I didn't have to say I am I am drawing right now, right? And you dismiss this. And for some reason, I want to go to the effects panel and, and I want to apply an effect. Well, I don't want to have to change the mode back to drawing or, or back to effects. So say if I'm drawing and I change it to effect, this one is going to be in drawing. But I want this to be in effects because the reason why I went to here and pick an effect is because I want to actually apply an effect. So that's why I'm changing the modes as I'm changing some of these options as well, except for settings because settings doesn't really apply to a mode. But that's how those ones work. I have, you know, different UI elements in here, such as changing the brush size, you know, whether I want to smooth a line, whether I want to clear draw lines, if I want to apply a random color. And I'm going to be adding more features that, and also some cleanups because I, I think some things in here don't really apply. This clear all lines, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say clear all or start fresh or, or create a new. It might become something like, you know, creating a new, a new document. So the document becomes a drawing space. And then, you know, anything that you do in that drawing space is going to be attached to, you know, a session. And then when I clear the session, everything is going to be cleared out. And, and it, it wouldn't be really specific to draw lines. It's just that right now, this is what I have because of, you know, the phase that I'm on. I mean, I think I'm halfway through the app, so that's why. But I'm going to be moving this out at some point. So if I go to the actual effects, this is, you know, you get a snapshot of each one of these effects. And I wanted to do something cooler. I didn't just want to have a, a title that says start effects 
or I want to, I didn't have one, I have a title for portal cave effect. I wanted to have a preview of the effect, so that's what I ended up doing in here. This might become, you know, uh, only, you know, more of a, you know, you swipe and then you see the next effect versus having these two bands for now. I think this works just fine. And then also the motions, if I want to go through motions, I can kind of see a preview. And I also have a slider for the motion speed. I still have to have a slider for the actual radius. So I'm going to be adding that next. And then, you know, some different settings for AR, such as uh, single object placement versus multiple object placement. And these are just ideas that I have. I haven't implemented them just yet. So those are some of the, the UI pieces. So how do I handle the, the, also the actual bounds and where do they reside? So that's what I wanted to show you next. So if we look at the textures right now, I have this sprite. And this sprite has all the different icons. And the way that I handle that is I'm using a Photoshop file. So if I double click on it, and what that's going to do is going to open my, you know, the version of Photoshop that I have. And I think this one is, yeah, Adobe Photoshop 2020. So I try to keep simple, you know, everything simple that I do. So this is really no, if you're a graphic designer, this is pretty minimalistic. There's really not a lot of details in here, but I, I really like keeping things simple because, you know, I can, I can, if I can keep it simple, then I can do it all and then I can move faster. And that's the way that I think. And it might be different depending on, you know, depending on your team. If you have a graphic designer, then, you know, obviously you have that person to help you with this. In my case, it's going to be flaticons.com and then my own Photoshop skills to be able to do this. So normally what I do if I need, if for instance, if I need a new icon, so I have everything organized in the hierarchy. I have the, this one was called panel button. I don't know why I call it panel button because I think that was all part of, of the panel that was residing on the menu, which is the one that I have that I have right here. But this doesn't really apply anymore, so this should actually be move out. And let me I'm gonna collapse everything and then I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what I have. I'm also going to be this one this one is actually the text options window. I think that's the right one. And yep. Okay, so let me go ahead and move. Well, actually I'll just rename this. It's going to be we can just say UI. I think that's I think that's fine. I'll just save it out. So this is the way that I handle UI, and, and I've been doing this for years. Even if I'm working on games, if I'm working on applications, I normally just do it in Photoshop. I think Photoshop is a great tool to do that. And then I try to organize everything into layer layers. So in my case, if I'm working on the button, you know, in this case, I'm work, I'm looking at the button menu, or the menu button. I think is more correct, but. I guess that, that works for now. So normally what I do is I, you know, I look at what the button is gonna be. If it, this one in this case is gonna be for the little menu that, that slides on the bottom. So I wanted to create a button menu icon and that's what this one is. The the surroundings of these, I keep them, if I look at the the actual button, let me go ahead and and see, okay, there we go. So in this case, what I, what I did, I didn't even use an icon in, in this case. All I was doing is just, you know, a rectangle and then with the background, with the fill. And then I just basically draw three, three lines. So three different rectangles and that gave me the look that I was looking for. So this one is not a good example of one of the icons that I use from, from Flat Icon. But if I look at, for instance, the effect one is one of the good examples that, so I needed to look at something that looked like, you know, an effect and, and I think a magic one was a good selection for that. So. What I did is I wanted to, I pick a, a look that I wanted for the UI. In my case, I wanted to do, you know, a light gray and I wanted to have bands that were rounded. So that's what I did in here. So this one is also a rectangle with a border. So if you look at the border and we go into properties, you can see that I have a border of 76. Actually the, the edge is 76 PX and I can go here. And if I don't like it, I can go later and change it all to 20. Let's say that I wanted to make it more you know, have, have less rounded edges, or if I wanted to do zero, I wanted to make it more flat and not have any rounded edges, I could do that. Or I can just basically just undo and go back to what I had. So that's what it is. And then all it is, is just a background with a with a light gray color. Then on the icon side, I, I could have drawn a lot of these. They're actually pretty easy to do. But at the same time, I, I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing this. Otherwise, I would never finish the app. So what I ended up doing is I found this site, which is called, like I said in the beginning, flat icon. And 
I didn't want to use the free version because the free version doesn't allow you to use it for commercial apps. So I'm going to be offering this, you know, this application either paid or free, but it's going to be made, you know, from a from a commercial company, which is my my company. So I didn't want to just use the free one because I was vi violating the licensing. So what I did is I okay, I just used the premium version. I actually just subscribed to the premium version, and it has a max of. I think it's 2,000, 2000 downloads a month or something like that. You can look it up, but it's the premium, the premium version of their application. So let's say that I wanted to do, you know, in, in my case, I think I did minimalistic, minimalistic design, or I wanted to keep things simple, or maybe I did minimal design. Let's see if I can find, yeah. Or we can just say like magic, magic one, which is what I was looking for. And if you look in here, you, you know, you notice that some of these ones are the ones that have the little, you know, the, the what do you call this, the little crown it, are the ones that are premium. And the ones that don't have a crown are not premium. So these ones, anybody can download them. But again, the licensing is going to be a problem. So in my case, I, I normally just search for premium because they're going to be cooler. And then, yeah, they just spend more time on those. So let's say that I like this one for the app that I'm building. Then I just go in and then just basically just download the image. And then as soon as I have the image, then I can go back into Photoshop. And I'm just gonna show you a very simple demo of what I would do to do this. For now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just hide, let's just hide these two so that we have more, more space. And then let's say that I want to add a new icon. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. And this is after you have a template to work with. Of course, I have a lot of different examples. So let's say that I just do button demo, because in this case we're doing we're doing a demo. Then I just move one of the icons down. And I just focus on um, you know the icon that I'm building. And then I just basically just expand the icon that I'm working on. I leave the one that I already have, and then I just go into my downloads. Then just basically just paste this. And I've been working in Photoshop for a long for a long time. So I'm not really gonna go into details of how the tools work. I'm assuming that you guys know and then, or you guys have a uh, graphic designer. And then what I do is I just copy the layer style, paste the layer style, and then remove the previous one. And then of course, align the icon. And let's say that that was one of the icons. What I'm gonna do is, let's actually make it for real because I wanna show you how I handle this in, also in, Unity. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm running out of space, and, and I don't think I'm actually running out of space. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and change this to pixels. The width of this, I'm going to increment it. Let's increment it by 500. But if you do that, it's going to change. It's going to change everything in Photoshop, all the different coordinates. So what I'm gonna do, let me see if I can rearrange some of these ones so we can get more space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, for instance, if I move this one right here, let's go ahead and move the button text. I'm going to move it to the right a little bit. and then, But you get the idea. So I'm just getting more space for in order for me to play uh, place another icon. And this one right here, it's going to be... So this tool is really cool, the auto select. It allows me to select the actual image, in this case, of the icon that I'm selecting. So I'm just gonna move it to the right a little bit, and then we can now select this one. And I'm gonna just uncheck out of select so that I can move the whole thing. And we can probably just put this one right here. I'm gonna be reorganizing everything, so don't really worry. I, I really don't like things when they're not aligned. So I think for now it's okay. And then we can just move move this I want this one a little bit more. Let's go back to this one move it a little bit more there I think then I'll just move this one as well just give us a little bit a little bit more space and I think that I think that works I think this is gonna give us a good example because we're gonna have to rearrange the sprite locations for the icons that I just moved so so this is great it's a good okay so the next thing that I would do is let's say that this is a new icon for a new feature I'm just gonna save it and then it's close out of Photoshop I don't need it anymore close out of this and then I'll just go back to unity and if I were to if I were to apply this which I did by saving see how everything is messed up now 
and some of the icons are overlapping and that's because the sprite has now changed so normally what i do is i go back to my sprite go into inspector sprite editor and now we need to deal with you know rearranging some of the locations for the for the icons so for instance the the one that i just changed and in my case it says i need to change some of these ones because they they're now at a different location so what i would normally do is just zoom in and then just rearrange this rectangle which is going to define the area that we are slicing for our, our icon so what i'm saying is okay uh, this is going to be a width of 200 and 200 at this position so the system when i slide it when i hit apply actually apply here it's going to create an image for this icon and then i can use that image in the app and then i'm going to do the same thing on this one i need to rearrange the location and i think the other ones are fine the, this one is fine everything else is fine so the one that we need to we need to add now is going to be this one this one is offset so i need to rearrange the location too because i moved that one a little bit so i'm just going to I think let me go up a little bit more let me zoom in and there we go let me just go to the right a tiny bit okay there we go now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to you know just click and drag and it's going to create a new rectangle so i'm gonna the cool thing is if you scroll with your mouse then you know it'll zoom into that area so it's really really intuitive when it comes to a sliding slicing and selecting an area then what i can do here is i can also select that area i think i need to go a little just a little tiny bit bigger and then remember this was 200 by 200 so i normally select the area by you know by looking at it but then what i do i do here is i just say okay i'm gonna do i'm not gonna do 200 and for some reason this is not really it doesn't really work really well so if i need to go up to a number and then go down and then it allows me to put the, the number that I'm looking for. So once you start using it, you'll you'll know what I mean. And then in this one, I'll just do 200, so 201, and then I'll just do 200. And I think now that should match, you know, the size of everything else. And I think that's good. Let's go ahead and hit apply. And now it'll zoom out. And now we should have everything, you know, everything set correctly. If I go back to my UI, you can see that now everything is good. So let's say that I wanted to add a new icon. So I'm going to go and focus on the on this view. And I'm not looking at the game view. I'm looking at the same view. That's where you'll norm normally be working on. And I don't want to look at many options. I'm just going to add an icon somewhere in here. And this is not going to be something that I'll have working, but it, it'll just give you an idea of what how I work with the adding UI. And let's see, this one is going to be, we're just going to call this one icon test. Think that's fine and then what i normally would do is just change the source image and then i would say okay where is my new icon and the new icon that i added is this one this is the last number in the sheet so it's going to select it and we can just move here and you can see that now i have and because i cloned that icon with the menu now that's going to do the same the same action that the menu is doing so if i hit play the icon should work just like the menu works it just has a different style you can see how i can open it and obviously this is not working right because the this is not this doesn't have all the different bindings to the that the other icon has but that gives you an idea of how i handle the ui so that's everything that i wanted to show you today specifically on ui and ux if you guys have any questions on anything that i just did or mentioned please let me know in the comments because it really helps me in understanding what you're looking for to learn and then also how I can improve by making new videos. So thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned on UI and UX, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.